How was uh, your week off of After Smoke, Jay? My week off? Did we take a week off? It didn't feel like it. Yeah. We were doing uh, we were doing a bunch of work ourselves. We might not have been at Comic-Con, but we put out just a, a poop load of content. It just seemed like you didn't miss it. I wanted you to miss After Smoke because I missed it. I did. I did miss it. It feels like we haven't done this in forever for some reason. I have no idea why. I it, Partially, it's my fault. Because I went ahead and just said, hey, let's just take the week off. Because they didn't do a live show last week. Uh, I knew that they were going to Comic-Con. So I just figured, hey, what the hell? Why don't we just take the week off? I told Christian, hey, we're not doing after Schmo. And I expected like a why? What's going on? Did something happen? There were There were absolutely zero questions asked. It was just, okay. He doesn't care about us. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it was. He doesn't care about us. But uh, something I noticed, Jay, is uh, the past few weeks, we've been getting thumbs down on our YouTube podcast. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It, they happen very, very... You don't like that? They happen very, very quickly. And when you compare After Schmo with something like Sight and Sound, obviously, Sight and Sound gets virtually z- no thumbs downs um and after smoke can get like at least a dozen at a time and i know that the amount of plays differ between the two but basically what i'm getting at is something according to some people is very wrong with after schmo and the more and more i think about it for one I, i've said this before several times i have never had the urge even when i dislike something that i'm watching i i very rarely have the urge to notify that person. I I never ever put a thumbs down. I don't I barely even do thumbs up, okay? So I've never once I don't know what it's like to feel the urge to hate something, to despise something so much that I have to tell that person. I have to give them a thumbs down. I just never feel that way. So when I see that someone is doing it for after schmo, not only does it piss me off, but it blows my mind. Because all we're doing here is talking about schmoes, though. Like, what what are you possibly grading when you give us that thumbs down? This has been happening for several weeks, and I realize, I think, I think it's something, one particular thing that we do. And, and this oh, is yeah. sort of, yeah, this is sort of my thesis that I'm exploring right now. It's a theory that I have. I'm excited. I'm going to go ahead and get it out of the way. I'm going, this will be a trial run. I'm going to, I'm going to speak on this particular thing right out of the gate and see if we get thumbs downs very early on. Okay. Are you ready for this? Uh, Okay. Yeah. I have no, for the record, actually two things real quick for the record. I have no idea what you're about to say. Second of all, my schedule's tight and I just have to let the people know while we're recording, I'm working on the thumbnail. For this video, okay, or podcast, go ahead. Did did what I say? Did it all make sense though? The, like, did, do you get what I'm about to do here? I'm going to get the thing that I think gives us thumbs downs. You're going to theorize, yeah, yeah, out of the way to see if it's actually what give us the thumbs down. Okay, what giveth the thumbs down? All I have to do is mention Brian David's. Welcome back after a two-week, well, one-week hiatus uh, to After Smo. My name is Ryan Snowy. My name is Jay Williams, and this thumbnail is not going to edit itself. Did you hear the glee in my voice? That was like a cadence that I've never, ever had before. I, that felt weird to me. Did it sound weird to you? No, no, it sounded normal. Are, oh. are, are we getting the self-conscious Ryan Snowy today? Why would I be self-conscious about being overly happy? It was just something I observed. I don't know. I, I'm just asking you a question. Take it easy, man. No. No, I'm not self-conscious. Okay. Hey, I've got a question. Okay. What the hell's wrong with Cobster and Beardo? I don't know. They should be ashamed of I, themselves. I agree. They're They're doing all this airing of grievances publicly on Twitter. They can't record... Now, granted, they were at Comic Con, but they can't, they can't even get together to do a wanger show. I don't know what's going on. I think they secretly hate each other. I mean, 
I, look, I just want to knock it out right here at the top of the show. This is going to sound like I'm doing a bit, but I'm not. I legitimately have podcasting advice for the Wanger Show. Can I give the podcasting <laughs> advice to the Wanger Show? Absolutely, but it might get you a thumbs down, but that's fine. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, okay, here's, here's my biggest, uh, and I think you can attest to this. Here's my biggest advice I can give to the Wanger Show. Do not rely on any other person in order to do your podcast. Under no circumstances should the reason of someone else not being there or doing a particular job, it should have no bearing on whether or not the show could come out. The way our podcasts, all of them, are set up, Sight and Sound Weekly, uh, maybe not our standalone shows, After Schmo, Let's Talk Legion, all that stuff. If one of us wasn't there, not only could we do the show, but we could also edit it, put together the thumbnail, upload it. We could do all of those things. And I understand that not everybody's that well-rounded, but you can't rely on other people in order to, as a reason to not do the show. Is that fair? So I can, I can already smell the steam uh, coming off of Copster right now because I guarantee he doesn't give a shit about what we think. That's fine. Hey, <laughs> hey, man, he, he doesn't have to. All I'm saying is, look, one way you can do the show and one way you can't. I'm just throwing it out there. I love everybody. I get it 100%. I don't know what went on, but I'm just saying. Don't don't rely on that old beardo. I'm sure that time is also a huge factor that we're not considering because maybe he doesn't have time to edit. Blah blah blah. Maybe that's why. Anyway, I'm that's I'm fair. ready to move on. It's all that video. That's true. That is true. They uh, they put a, an extra burden on themselves by they they started that precedent very early on by bringing up the video thing. We just we just ruined. I'm sure he was like writing out his rebuttal to this, and he was like, well. We do video, and then we said it, and he just scratches it out. He's like, "We do video. It takes time. We know, we know." Guys, if you didn't pick up on it, Sight and Sound Weekly also comes out on Mondays now. And to just be <laughs> totally transparent, um, when I found out the top ten was coming back, I knew that it would we would be doubling up essentially because I can't think of what show comes out on Wednesday now. I don't even know if they officially changed that. But when I first uh, found out about Top 10, Sight and Sound was going to be the second show on Wednesdays. And I guess maybe that didn't even happen, now that I'm thinking about it. But um, my question was, if we're going to double up, uh, if we're going to be the second show, can we just put it out on Monday? Because that's when our actual podcast comes out. Like, on our site, our, our eh, podcast feed on iTunes. Sight and Sound Weekly actually comes out on Monday. So it would debut on SK Plus two days later, and I always hated that. So months ago, I asked Cobster, "Hey, do you care about? Do you care to switch days?" And he basically just said no, no, as in he didn't want to switch. Yes, that he did care. Uh, but then this top ten thing came up, and I was like, "Well, hey, if we're gonna be the second show, can we just do it on a Monday?" And Christian was like, "Okay, fine." So Sight and Sound comes out on Monday as well, and um, I wanted to apologize to Cobster. I feel like it would have been easy for him to mistake that like some kind of collusion like we were out to get him when it wasn't and actually we were. the case oh, okay sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um you talked about ruining uh oh no 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 no, no. Well, i don't want to get your live show notes yet because i forgot we've actually been having a ton of fun talking about collider the hey man we're talking about collider weeks. now how dare you not only are we talking about collider we have a lot to talk about when it comes to collider Definitely. Where do you, where do you want to get started? Because we can kind of talk about things that happened last week as well, right? Right. I I think the first thing that I want to just talk about just straight off the top is something that not only did I not know whatever happened, but I also never knew how well it could happen, and that's Movie Talk Live. Did you get a chance to watch Movie Talk Live? What day specifically? I mean, I mean, Movie Talk Live, where they actually did it in front of a live audience. Oh, oh, at the Comic-Con. No, I did not watch that. Okay. Just, just real quick. If I say they're going to do Movie Talk Live, I want you to grade how you would think that would go. Just, just 
and so that they've never done it before i just want you to give a grade on how you think movie talk live would go well i think that they would be very easily distracted they would be more jokey they would be more playing to an audience so i think the dynamic of the show would be actually a whole lot different maybe not nearly as organized um, but then again, I could see uh, Dennis Zen cracking the whip in the background, <laughs> making sure that they got <laughs> to every uh, story in a timely manner. Uh, but, you know, I think people, from what I saw, the clips that I saw, people were coming in and out of the show. Um, so I don't know. I feel like it was a lot more loose. And again, being able to play to the audience wouldn't make it a whole lot of fun. Am I right? Yeah. So I think the thing that you're touching on is the biggest point that needs to be made about this it, it wasn't your straight up typical movie talk it wasn't like the same sort of format they did have a rotating cast of characters it was almost more of like uh uh maybe like a do you remember cold pizza or whatever the sports nation whatever it's called on espn is it you know one of those shows where it's like an hour yeah. long or an hour and a half yeah. long and they just have like here's gonna here's the basketball person here's the yeah, football yeah. person yeah, yeah. it was yeah. just like that and it was fantastic. Not only was it fantastic, it had its own vibe. It had its own flavor, so to speak. Man, they knocked it out of the park. Not only did they knock it out of the park, but Mark Ellis did such a fantastic job. It was, man, it was great. You had uh, you had the Tony Ravioli or whatever their names are, Christian <laughs> and Sh- Christian and John Snip coming up on stage to do their uh, their jokes together and it was just great man and it was like you could tell the people in the audience were just collider fans in general because christian being the star wars guy there wasn't a lot of star wars if any at comic book or comic book at comic con and just to hear him bring up some star wars news like the energy and the levels or th- god what is wrong with me the energy in the room the energy level in the room got turned up a little bit and it was just special, man. I just thought it was a really, really f- special occasion. You're fucking up because you're working on that thumbnail while you're talking. Actually, I'm not. It's because I I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Well, I don't know if that makes it better or worse. <laughs> I slept in today. I slept in. My alarm didn't go off. And I was 30 minutes late to work. Should I go back and watch it? Or is this going Absolutely. to be ruined for me now because of all the Comic-Con overload that we've gotten? Uh, have we, have we gotten Comic-Con overload? I don't know. Uh, so just also to note, this is my one year anniversary, maybe not to the date, but my one year anniversary, anniversary of watching the Schmoes No Live show. I started the first episode I ever watched was the Comic-Con episode last year. And I was, I had Comic-Con overload, Comic-Con fatigue, superhero fatigue, which is the made up term that people say. And uh, I just put a marker down this year. I said, I'm not going to take in as much pop culture content. Um, I haven't actively not done that, but I haven't really felt the fatigue. Have you? I feel like I feel like nobody's like, not necessarily not talking about it, but it's not as crazy as it was last year. I'm on the brink of it, and I'm not going to lie. I wasn't really looking forward to the live show because of how I thought it might play out. And it did, we'll get there, but it didn't end up bothering me in fact i thought they handled the live show uh, very well as far as balancing topics but it would have been very easy for me to have comic-con o- or yeah comic-con overload sorry i'm working on the uh, after schmo thumbnail right now uh, it would have been very easy for me to have overload um but it, it just worked out worked out that way but i didn't know if i should go back and watch it or not um i want to talk about some of the daily stuff real quick I, we're recording this on a Thursday. Obviously, this comes out on a Friday. Um, I happen to see that um, Christy... Sorry, I had to look at my copy of Battlefront 2. Christy Golden is going to be uh, a guest on Jedi Council. You all will have already seen it uh, by the time this podcast comes out. But Christian said there was also another daily announcement. I uh, assume that it will be the fact that Jedi Council is going daily. Um, That's but crazy I, to me. I'm not positive, though, just because at the time that we're recording this. But overall, I want to talk about the daily thing because it kind of blew my mind a couple of weeks ago. that It was something that I never even considered. Uh, Heroes has been daily for two weeks now, three weeks, two weeks. 
Um, and I think that they've just been killing it. I think it's a, a, a great a small dose, a daily dose of heroes. Uh, TV talk is about to go daily uh, starting next week, I believe. Um, Collider is going to look a lot different. Yes. So, have you been keeping up with it all? Do you like it? And do you think Jedi Council will be going daily as well? All right. So, I'm so glad you brought this up. I think that in previous iterations, the I guess the last iteration of Collider that existed, that we've sort of we've talked about this before off air that. After a while, so many months of taking in Collider content religiously, just over and over and over again, you do get a, you sort of like lose, I feel your attachment to it a little bit because you see the same people, it's the same people are going to be on the same shows, they're going to have similar conversations, like a lot of movie talk stuff sort of trickles down to the people below and because you have so many of the same faces, you get a lot of the same conversations and that's fine. Absolutely, the wheels are turning, the machine is moving forward, and it's great I for new people you, especially. I think what you want to say is that Collider is better post John Campia. So what I want to say <laughs> is that this new version of Collider... Look, I'm perplexed by this, okay? here's I'm perplexed by this whole situation. One, I love it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. It It is sort of built so that it is impossible to get overlap of opinions, of views. You're getting a, a consistently new take from every single show you watch. The faces on Collider uh, Movie Talk have been, I mean, it's crazy that every time I turn on the show, because I don't watch every single day, but when I turn it on, every time I do, it's a, it's a completely new table, and I love it. And it, it just keeps things fresh. Now, because you have these shows like Heroes, um, Jedi Council even, even though we don't know if it's going daily, there is the risk that you're talking about so much over the span of a week that maybe you choose not to tune in every single day. But that's okay, right? That's okay. People who love sports don't watch Sports Center every single day. Sometimes you turn it on in the background while you're getting ready for work and whatnot. But when there's something hot to talk about, you don't have to wait until the Thursday when Jedi Council comes out. You can listen to it that day. And that's why it's so smart. I mean this in the best way possible. Some people will take this as an insult. It's actually not the case at all. Collider video is the first thing that I look to and go to whenever I have nothing to do. Um, and that's and, and I mean that in the sense that that's what I want. Like, okay, now I'm going to take time and watch Collider video. So this solves that problem. <laughs> There's always something for me to check out. There's always something for me to watch. Um, I caught myself... Something I said to Christian about how happy I was that everything was going daily. Um, I said to him that I was so happy, particularly with Heroes, because I would get my daily Robert Meyer Burnett fix. Or no, I, I think I worded it as long as I get my daily Robert Meyer Burnett fix, which is, that was one of my concerns a couple of weeks ago on After Smo. Like, is it going to be convenient for the same panelists to arrive daily? And so far... Amy Dow and Robert Meyer Burnett, they've been there every day, but I just realized that that's not how I should approach it. That's not the right attitude to have. Um, so I've since walked back on this. Um, having daily shows gives you the opportunity, like Ellis was talking about, to have a, a more diverse cast, more diverse people. So having... Having the problem of will Robert Meyer Burnett be available daily is not an actual problem. So I apologize for thinking that way. Um, I, I do want to see more people involved. Ellis brought it up on Movie Talk, how he's going to make panels more diverse. So that's actually something that I I want heroes to change because it has been Robert Meyer Burnett and Amy Dallin for like the past uh, two weeks. So I hope everybody's thinking about that, and I hope especially them over at Collider. Uh, how they can change it up a little bit. Something that Christian said to me was that he's looking to do episodes between 20 and 30 minutes. I hope that that's a little loose. I hope, like today, for example, Heroes was like 18 minutes, which is fine because there's only so, so much that you can talk about, but I hope it's a little bit loose. Like, I want it to go to 40 minutes, 
if it needs to go 40 minutes. Because I, I think different days will dictate the length. So hopefully they're a little bit lenient on that front. But overall, um, I'm loving it so far. I, I think your apprehension is completely warranted by, you know, will you get what you need? Will you not get what you need? It's completely warranted. But I think we only need to look as far as the Schmoes No Live show to see over the years, over the courses of the different phases, how they've kept a rotating cast of characters and how well that's worked. Now, they, they do one show a week, obviously, but it's still it's still worked in their favor. I mean, I feel like Collider is getting some of the Schmoes No business model transplanted over to it. And of course, that's probably the case with Christian being in whatever position that he's in. But I, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I said I was of two minds about this. I was perplexed about this because I love everything that's going on. Here's why I'm perplexed, okay? I am hungry for information. I want to know the behind the scenes. I know that you don't want Christian to come onto this show because it's going to signal the fact that it, that we're doing terrible, and that's fine. Uh, we might be, considering all of the thumbs down that we've got. But regardless, I want <coughs> Christian to come on to this show. I want somebody of note. It could be Mr. Fernandez. It could be whoever. I want them to come onto this show. I want to know some behind the scenes. What is the plan for Collider? Like, is this just the first step? Like, we know that Christian loves the very loose Howard Stern version of, of things. We saw that, and we'll get to it with the, the boom mic uh, arms that they just had put in to give it more of a radio show feel. When is Collider going to get that treatment? When are we going to get more long-form versions? Because, yes, all the shows going daily, give, getting that shorter uh, the shorter little nugget of shows, now I'm starting to miss the long-form ones a little bit, like... I just want to know what's on the horizon. I want to know the plans. And look, I know that we probably just need to sit back and relax and just wait for everything to come up and we can be surprised as anyone. But look, I want to be I want to be some investigative is that the right word? Is that the right way to say it? I want to be investigative journalists. I just, want the scoop. Just slow down, investigative. I want to be the investigative journalist and I want to know. I want to break like uh, like El Mayimbe, I want to break the scoops. Okay? That's what I want to know. So I'm extending an invitation to anybody that might know. If, uh, if Riley wants to call in with one of those voice things and talk like some anonymous person and give us some behind-the-scenes scoops, let us know. <laughs> I'm thinking about somebody over at Collider wearing that uh, new Batman a uh, toy helmet that changes your voice when you talk. Uh, Flick Pick was using on uh, YouTube today. But, I just uh, want to start. Can we just do like maybe like a one minute segment every week from now on? We're we're just making up things that are going on at Collider. <laughs> like we're just like Collider launching a new unboxing show. Oh wait, no, that happened already. Collider launching a uh, top five. No, that happened too. I don't know. We could just start making up new things that are gonna launch for Collider. I'm on it. Okay. So another thing that happened while we were gone, very quickly, and, and basically nothing has developed since, but I saw a tweet from Christian that he's playing Xbox now, and there's a community on Xbox for uh, Collider Gaming, and he downloaded Battlefield. I don't, th I don't think he's played it since. So it was like once, two weeks ago. Uh, I... I I don't, I don't know what the hell they're doing on that front. Maybe that's just a work in progress. They haven't really... I mean, they put out those videos that we've talked about before with the the VR experiences, but I haven't seen Christian playing battle for, battle yeah Battlefield. Excuse me. So I don't know what the hell they're doing there, but that's a thing, uh, if you didn't know. I want to talk about comic book shopping. I'm continuing to... Or I, I basically, I continue to be shocked... And impressed by the guests that they have. And they had uh, the kid who played Ned in Spider-Man Homecoming. And this past week they had Tim Miller, director of Deadpool, obviously. I'm not going to go into the same things that I've said over and over again every week. Uh, but I continue to be impressed. And by far, Tim Miller has been the best thing to happen to the show so far. Because simply, he's been the best guest. Did you watch it? Actually, I haven't gotten a chance to see that one yet. So I'm very excited oh. to go back and watch it. 
Ooh, he's he's without a doubt the best guest. They went to a new comic book store, his comic book store in Culver City. Uh, he was, he's just a. How far does he live from it? I think he only lives like three blocks away. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, they went to a new place. It looked a lot of, like a lot of fun. Tim Miller is a huge comic book sweaty, whereas in the past couple of weeks, they've had people on that just kind <laughs> of know about comic books. It was great to see him actually get more involved with Snap. He was just a... He was just a better personality. He wasn't like Martin Starr trying to be weird. He was actually like really into the show, and without a doubt, he's the best guest. So I really urge you to go back and watch it. It's a lot of fun. I have two like hopeful guests, dream guests, if you will, to go on comic book shopping. One, I want John John Snip. I want him to take Robert Meyer Burnett comic book shopping just so that they can that's, both just nerd out like crazy yeah, on the show. That's what I said that a couple of weeks ago. I oh, think. Did you really? Yeah, I said if if they can't maintain having those high profile guests, I want R and B to to always be the sort of the substitute guest, um, and make make that a thing. Like, don't just do it once. Like, make it a thing. My so. number my number two dream pick. I want John Snip to take Michael Rappaport comic book shopping. I just think that, that would be <sighs> great. They can pick up, like, he can show him like, Shaq Fu or something. He can show him some awesome, uh, like, NBA or hip-hop toys, and then they can just read, like, Archie comics or something, because <laughs> I have no idea. We know, if you don't know anything about Michael Rappaport, is he doesn't give a shit about comic books. <laughs> Definitely. It, yeah. it just I don't know. I'm I'm already imagining that. And it would probably probably be hilarious, but it would It'd also go be viral. very it would probably be, You're welcome, be very one note though at the same time. Who's this fucking guy? <laughs> look, look at that fucking thing. What the <laughs> fuck? Yeah. It's pretty much his reaction to every single book in the store, I guarantee it. My favorite um, thing about Michael Rappaport is his laugh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was a good impression. Um, what else am I missing? The most recent Schmodown IGN versus Deep Cuts. Those questions were strangely too easy. I thought that was weird. Uh, but that's pretty much all I've got in the world of Collider. Do you have oh, anything else? Oh, crap. I forgot something. And I don't know if we're supposed to talk about it. And But I will, I will anyways because I saw it happen. Um, did you know that Christian did a Facebook Live... To talk about the schmodown and he accidentally spoiled something. <laughs> did yes, you know I did. This? I did. <laughs> I saw the video. People were already making jokes. Actually, as a matter of fact, today someone in Schmoville posted they added his footage into uh, like this I Oscar that. reveal. I saw, that's how I found out about it. So I'm, I just kind of shaked. I shook my head. I think it's not, hilarious. Not not because great. not because that he did it. I, I'm actually surprised that he went as long as he did without, well, anybody, frankly. I mean, it's got to be very, very difficult to maintain two different timelines in your head, where you are in the Schmodown presently versus where you are in the Schmodown on YouTube. I'm shocked that they haven't had a mess up like this already. But, but, we, I don't think any of us would have picked up on it. People would have theorized, maybe, like, why did Christian say this? But we wouldn't have known that it was a legitimate spoiler if he hadn't have said that. Right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. Look, the thing, I feel bad. I feel bad for him. I'm not trying to be funny, but I feel bad because there's been this big conversation lately about people being kind of shitty in the Schmodown community about like, oh, things are rigged, things are this and that, and the comments. Like... <sighs> I just feel bad because I think that I feel like that gives people fodder for stuff, but I don't know. Did you see Jen Sturger's post on the Schmodown uh, group or whatever? No, I did not. It was like this huge long thing, and God love her, but it was just like her having to defend herself to tell people like take it easy, like this is a game, it's for fun, it's for entertainment, like people. And I know we have a lot of we have a lot of listeners who are fantastic, but so this is to all the shitbags out there. Just 
just relax. People should not be having to make those posts on social media. And I don't know how we got to this point from the Christian stuff, but it's just it's just ridiculous. Just chill out. Just have fun with it. I agree. I mean, I don't know how we got here either, but it, it is important to talk about it because you're right. People need to chill the fuck out. But it's like at the same time, why why do you why do you even belong? Like it's hard for me to imagine. Why do you even belong to a page like that if you right. aren't in on the joke? You know what I mean? Oh, uh, and like, especially somebody like her who is you know relative relatively new to this whole thing, and it's not like she's featured on every single video. No. That's no, I was the, talking about fans. I wasn't talking about no. The I know. Pundits. I oh, know. Okay. That's what I'm saying. It's a shame that she, of all people, had to had to deal with this. Like, right. what the hell? If, I mean, I think I think as a community, I think Schmoville and the people, the fans of Schmodown, who I think need to help self police this stuff a little bit. Like, get the f- hell out of here. Like, if you're trying to be a, a jackass, like it's just not. Well, I, I have no patience for it. Yeah, I, it's something that I don't think I will ever understand. Much like the people that go out of their way to add thumbs down to YouTube videos. So, do you want to talk? <laughs> do you want to talk Weird about the Smoke Live Show now? I don't know if you want to. Yes, absolutely, I do. I want to talk about Ace wearing that dope jacket. I also want to talk about what roller coaster tycoon just loaded up on my computer hold on let me get this out of here that's the weirdest thing ever look i think (laughs) i do want to say i do want to say this i think (laughs) i think everyone should be ashamed of themselves uh because comic-con not only is a great time for content (laughs) within collider and schmoes no it's also a great time uh to showcase how fantastic the likes of rb3 and ace are and it also makes me realize just how underutilized they are. Like, it's ridiculous. I mean, you got Beardo not showing up to do the Wanger show. Where the hell is Ace's show? We've talked about this before. How did, did how did we get here? I thought we were transitioning into the live show. We are. Ace was on the live show, featured very prominently. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. What <laughs> We're kind of jumping around. Okay, it, let, me just, let me just get it out of the way. I didn't take any notes. Oh, okay. Yeah? I, and I always take notes. You know me. I've always got to have sort of a guideline. i got to have a rundown of what to talk about. I don't have any notes, so I'm just going to be all over the place. I'm going to be doing this on the fly. Speaking of Comic-Con coverage, seeing Ace and uh, RB3 and even last year, David Griffin really carried some of the way. Michael, Michael Medina came in. So those guys are really good. You have to give them a ton of credit because Comic Con has got to be extremely difficult. You got to give them a ton of credit um, for providing all of the content that they provided. What was so odd to me was hearing Ken Knapsack just raise his <laughs> hand last night on the show and just be like, "Hey, have you ever wondered why we put ourselves through this?" And I'm just sitting there thinking, like, he's a very introspective it like a, individual. It was like I had seen Fight Club. For the very first time again. Like my attitude towards life completely changed. And I'm like well. Going back to uh, my famous catchphrase. You don't have to do anything. So I was on the same wavelength. As uh, Ken Knapsack for a moment. I was like hmm. Why do they make it this hard on themselves? But I'm thankful for it. (laughs) Well yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I mean they kind of have to. It's their job. That's what I would say. To you and to him. Go do your job. How about yeah, that? Not a single person had that rebuttal. Like, Ken, we we have a salary to do things like this. <laughs> we have a salary so you can go to parties and drink. Yeah, exactly. Um, so let's talk about uh, the Schmozlo Live show. They were going to talk about Comic-Con and kick-ass females. What in, episode uh, is this? In film. I don't know. I didn't take notes. Okay. Um, but someone who did take notes is Jay Williams. That's Are right. you ready to give us your uh, stream of consciousness notes? I am. You ready for him? It, I'm ready. Is Christian Harloff ready? This is his favorite segment. Yeah, I hope so, because this is the only favorite segment that I did of his today. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. This is your Schmoes No live show, stream of consciousness notes brought to you by SightSoundPod.com. Before the show starts, I want to wish a happy one-year birthday 
to Christian Hates TV. <laughs> hmm, what a random group of people. Rose makes great products. Rose, I meant Road, sorry. Road makes great products, but all Christian had to do is ask us for audio equipment tips, considering we have the best audio and all of Collider and Schmoes know. Look at those dope jackets. Cobster needs the beard back. Did Cobster just reference Kanye? Makuga's nuts story is incredible. Ace is fire. RB3 speaks in Stardust reactions. <laughs> I'm furious. Where the fuck is Daddy Don't Slap Me? And that is your Schmoes No Stream of Consciousness Notes brought to you by SightSoundPod.com. Not Shorter only. Notes. Shorter notes. Yeah, not only did you skip the history lesson, Christian's other favorite segment, but you just gave him like a quarter dosage of that segment. Interesting. I, I didn't have, look, I was, uh, okay. I might have <laughs> gone in, I might have gone into this episode with higher expectations because I mentioned it on Titan Sound. This is the first year that I've really gotten like nuts and bolts, nitty gritty, down in the dirt with, uh, comic-con and i was like i was looking forward to i don't know I, like last year last year like we had that guy i can't remember his name that came in and he was like the the dude that ran all the parties and all this stuff and we just got a lot of a lot of behind the scenes stuff and we got a lot of that information from people on the show but i feel like with christian not being there we didn't get all of the debauchery that we could have gotten because we know you know mark is he's very uh suit and tie now now that he's the official movie talk host and he's doing great at it but i, I just wish i just think we might have missed out on some stories that we could have gotten otherwise i'm shocked that we have totally opposite takes on this like, i love the i love the sh the show i love this week's so, show i thought it was incredible so your expectations were high, not because you expected more Comic-Con material as far as like Marvel DC stuff, but you were expecting more behind the scenes of Comic-Con than you actually got? Is that, well, yeah, is that did course. I hear you correctly? A hundred percent, because we get all this Comic-Con stuff. We get it all week. We get it all week. See? Our show covered it. We get these takes. And we've gotten them from a lot of these people, except with the exception of like Joelle. We, you know, she wasn't featured as much. But I want to know what's going on. I want to hear the macadamia nut taco story. But see, I'm going the other way on this. See, we we got that. We got the nut story. Makuga had had his story. We got a little bit of the behind the scenes. And like I said earlier on the show, I was. I was kind of hesitant to watch it because of all the Comic Con talk, and and not because of you know th their hot takes on the movies and TV news, but you might be because right. at the same time I don't just want to hear them talking about the parties that they went to at Comic Con, and I guess what I'm getting to is that I thought that it was the perfect amount. They they barely touched on the things that they saw there. In addition to having enough to say about the behind the scenes and the parties, blah, 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 we didn't get overkill on either subject. And for that, I am very thankful. So I'm going the other way on this. You know what? I actually think I'm going to I'm gonna concede your point. I think you're, you're right. I think you're 100% right. I'm <laughs> sort of looking at it from... Uh, from like a wide a wider angle and I think you're correct I think one of the interesting things about this episode is the difference between this week's Schmoes No live show proper and the last Schmoes No live show proper the last one before this not the pre-recorded one but the one prior to this had a cast of like some of your favorite people throughout the years, right? I mean, it was just, that was sort of the theme of that episode. It was all these people that you yeah. remember from past phases and whatnot. This, I think the theme of this episode was a lot of people that we haven't seen in a while or don't get to come on the show. I mean, you had Rachel Cushing, you had Joelle who hadn't been back in a while. Um, Josh McCuka was only there for like 20 minutes or something like that. You had Perry Nemiroff coming on the show. It, You're forgetting Ace, Wendy. What's that? You're forgetting Wendy. 
Wendy, absolutely, 100%. Wendy, I think Dennis Zhang probably was there, maybe. I don't know. Uh, no one would know, but you had what? Ace was prominent in the episode as well, right? RB3? Yeah. I yeah, mean, no. it was just a different cast of characters. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the the total attitude for this for this episode was women. And even down to the point where the the game women? at the very end Did of you the- say lemon or women? What do you think, Jay? I think you said I think you said women, but it sounded like you said lemon, but it could be our Skype call. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm actually disappointed that you walked back on your point, by the way. Why? I I wish you stuck to your guns. I would have no, loved okay, to have the Okay, okay, now now he's got a host that will concede arguments from time to time and and uh and now he's he's wanting me to stand firm I, and argue with I, you. I'm disappointed. I was enjoying the dynamic that we had going there. It was a contrast. It was different. It was unique. Anyway, um, I mean, we can we can go that route. We can <laughs> you can just argue until the cows come. Back, back to the lemons. Yeah, the, the the game at the end just involved the lemons at the table, <laughs> and uh, and yeah, and I I like that. I liked how. I liked how Mark and the gang made it a point to make the show something uh, something else. They had that extra theme on top of it, and uh, I thought it was I thought it was great. It was a great discussion. I remember enjoying. Um, I think the last great discussion we had like that was, oh, what was it? Was it Ben Affleck movies? No, that's not true. There was like a profile. That they did a few weeks back that we talked about. They like profiled some actor or director or something. And I think it was Ken's idea. I can't remember what it was now. But it was just a really great discussion. And I'm glad that this was sort of inserted in there as well. Can you can you remember what the hell I'm trying to think of? I don't remember. I can't remember okay. either. Okay, excellent. Yeah, we're um, great at this job. Let's talk about the mics situation. Let's do it. I'm so excited to talk about the mics. It just looks really pro. I mean, I wonder if we have any friends that work at Road. By the way, uh, no, I don't it's know. Just I, I Road, for the record, one, I love the ladies. Two, it's a fantastic, fantastic microphone company. Like that is so dope that they they got sent all this free. Because hey, it ain't cheap. It's a little, it's a little pricey. I mean, certainly any company, not cheap. Any company that can afford those dope Letterman jackets uh, that look like they're reenacting scenes from Teen Wolf, I mean, it just looks... They're doing a great job. Okay. Who, Road or the Schmoes? No. Both. Absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. Great job, Road. Let's change, let's change the title of this show to After Road. Who wrote that joke? Josh McCougar? <laughs> It's something I never even considered because when I heard Christian complained about the previous setup, I never really understood it. I know that it's very easy for them to knock on the base of their mics and kind of slam the table and it messes up the sound. But something I've never considered, I've never had to deal, I've never dealt with it. I've only always had a desktop mic stand. Well, that's not true. So I never. That's not true. When you come over here, you uh, you actually have the decision you have your choice of micro of a, a few you can hold our our mics you can have it on a boom or you can have uh the tabletop you prefer the tabletop microphone i guess i guess my point is i've never had i've never <laughs> needed like a laptop i've never needed like a laptop i've never needed my hands to be doing anything but podcasting so i've never even considered that the desktop mic stand would be in their way and I guess that's the whole point. And I would have known something like that had I been a professional like Ken Knapsack or some shit. But I'm not. So it makes a whole lot of sense that they would need this kind of equipment. I think it's kind of I think it's clunky. I don't I don't know if I like it in terms of like that style, but I do like it for their show and what they get out of it. And I right. it is super pro looking. So can I just like, say that I I had one of those microphones, not not a Rode, but um, I had one of those arms for a while. Yeah, hated it. I, I mean, I hated fiddling with it. It's just it, like this uh, big thing in in the frame. I don't know. It is it's clunky. Just kinda, it is clunky. Yeah. I recommend the standard boom microphone stands, but then you have to have somewhere to place them on the floor. So what the hell do I know? 
oh my gosh, I'm realizing now, just to give you an update on working on the thumbnail, this thing sucks to cut out. Holy <laughs> shit. How the fuck am I going to do this? I don't know, man. I mean, I'm having a hard enough time cutting out Perry's hair around these bangs. <laughs> around the bangs? Makuga, did you see him on Twitter today? Nope. Apparently, he is frustrated with the fans of Schmoville because they uh. misinterpreted his his allergy. He's not allergic to peanuts because peanuts are legumes, which I learned that from KET's original series, Zoom. He's, he's not a, allergic. He's allergic to tree nuts. He's allergic to tree nuts and seeds. I know somebody that is also allergic to tree nuts. So anyway, people are making memes, of course. People are going nuts about this, making fun of Makuga. He's legitimately frustrated, and so he tweeted out, Thank you for the memes, but I'm actually not allergic to peanuts. And then he he gave us a quick Encyclopedia Britannica definition between legumes and peanuts. So, two things that Josh Makuga is an expert in. Tree nut allergies and bourbons. I've never Do you have any allergies like that? I'm not allergic We've to anything. We talked about this before. When? I don't know, but I I remember talking. It might have been on one of our other 15 podcasts that we do. I'm allergic to sulfa drugs. I've literally never heard that in my life. We've talked about this before. I'm also allergic. When I was little, I used to be allergic to fruit punch. No. No. (laughs) Yes. No. Yes, I was. No. No. Ask my mama. And I was also allergic. I'm still allergic to poison ivy. I was also allergic to cigarette that's, smoke. That's not unique. Okay, just just say something about Makuga so we can move on. <laughs> I just I just really like Makuga's story. I just thought it was it was great. It was. Um, it's hilarious that he had to talk to Michael Giacchino uh, with <laughs> with puffy face. That's it's hilarious true. to me. It's got to be embarrassing. But then again, Do you, I don't know if Makuga has any shame. So I was about to say, do you think? Do you think Josh Makuga's uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon look is going to influence Michael Giacchino's next score? <laughs> I'm not even answering that question. <laughs> well, the answer is yes. He's going to do... If if Josh Makuga could influence a score to a movie, it would immediately sound like anything that Kenny Loggins has ever done. Essentially, <laughs> Top Gun, Flashdance, anything of that sort. We we get a tweet from Giacchino tomorrow that's like, I'm actually switching to directing, and my first project is called The Wild Man. <laughs> okay, I, I feel okay, like we're yeah. petering out here. What are, what are we missing? I didn't take notes. You had a very quick stream of consciousness notes. There's only so much that you can do here. We talked about how great it was seeing uh, people like Joel and Wendy back on the screen. It was very funny, by the way, Mark trying to uh, get at Perry and mess her up when it came to reacting to the Emoji movie. Which, by the way, if Christian Harloff went to the screening of that and the embargo lifted today, right? I don't think Schmoes has put out a review for it. Let me double check. I don't think yeah, they, they have d- either. As of right now, we're, we are recording this on Thursday afternoon. They have not put that up. So I'm wondering if Christian actually was at the premiere. Because there was already some miscommunication. Because Mark thought that he was going with his daughter. And uh, Perry said that he went by himself. So I think uh, something fishy is going on. I have a question. Okay. Maybe not a question. Maybe more of a statement. Okay. I don't, uh, we, don't, we don't get a lot of Perry on the, on the Schmoes No Show. No, I feel like she, I feel like she can flourish on the Schmozno show. She has, I mean, of all the people, she is such a professional. Like, not only is she good at just doing on camera stuff, I feel like every time she, she's very prepared. She's very tight when it comes to actually presenting on camera. But 
we we all know she likes to let loose a little bit. We've heard the stories. If you've listened to her, don't be a beardo. We've heard the stories that she likes to you know get a little loose, likes to have a, a couple drinks. I feel like she can party with the rest of them. Move over, f- Makuga. I feel like Perry is the exact opposite of everything Jeremy Johns is. <laughs> I don't like really everything, I don't, I don't have a statement for that. I think I might agree you, with you there too. Hearing you describe Perry, it's like, yeah, that's a dynamic that I've never considered. Because Jeremy Johns is the guy who just wakes up right before movie talk. Um, I've always thought that he just, he, all he does is reiterate what everyone else has said. And uh, yeah, they're, they uh, are like peanut butter and jelly that way. She's also incredibly well-rounded. That's the other thing, too. And I think sometimes we forget that it requires that on some on shows like a, a Movie Talk and like a Schmoes No live show yeah. is, I mean, look, we can't all have a anime segment like Ace, but she's well-rounded. She can essentially talk about anything. And that's also fascinating too because like we all know that Christian is like the Star Wars guy. He obviously has a Star Wars show. What show? What show would Perry have like where she would actually host it herself? Well, I mean I don't know if she would host it, but I mean Perry's thing would be Collider Nightmares. Right. Cuz that's what she was on frequently. But right. I don't know. I I agree that she's well-rounded, but I think that there are like Christian is still well rounded, whether you oh, call course. him the Star Wars man or not. So yeah, I don't he know. used to host I, TV talk for a point in time. That's true. That's true. Uh, no, I mean I, I I agree with what you're saying absolutely because it's it's sort of um, easy to forget that Perry is like mainly about horror because she can do everything else. Whereas I think you would arrive at Christian being the Star Wars pundit more so than Perry being the horror pundit. So I, I do agree with your point in that way. She reminds me of like a, like a Paul Pierce or something like that to throw out some sports uh, Paul references. Pierce. She's just, she's just very reliable or a, a Ray. What's his name? I forget his name. He used to play for the Celtics. Ray Allen. Ray Allen. Oh my God. Is there anybody more reliable than a Ray Allen? I mean, come on. Perry Nemiroff, the Ray Allen of Collider. <laughs> you, know, you know what I just realized by this episode of After Schmo? What? We were way more interested in talking about Collider than the live show. Like, we well, took a week off. We we should have been so excited to get back into the live show. And all we wanted to do is talk about Collider today. I told you that. I told you that off air that we had a lot of stuff to talk about with Collider. And look, That's for, what it's, for what it's worth, I mean... I didn't take down a lot of notes, which again, I've said this before, just the amount of notes does not have anything to do with the level of, uh, of the quality of the show. I just enjoyed watching this show. Like I enjoyed everybody's points. Um, I enjoyed the things that they were talking about, hearing the stories. We didn't have a breadth of the future, which was, I mean, just a tragedy, but everybody knows that when Brett's not there, it's Ace's time to shine. (laughs) And <laughs> Does everybody was, know that? Yeah, of course, and it was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, as soon as I realized Brett wasn't there, I was like, "Yes, Ace finally has his chance." <laughs> um, yeah, if if Brett had been on the show, we could have probably gone ten more minutes. But I hope that Brett is feeling better. I know that he has bronchitis. He had a great reason to not be at Comic Con or on the uh, live show. Um, I think it's time. I think we can wrap it up. Um, here, um, right. yeah, I think we're, I think we're good to go so far. Um, what did I want to say? If you want more of Mark Ellis, by the way, I just posted, um, Mark was very gracious. He recorded an episode of Sight and Sound with me. Um, he talks about his movie bucket list, his list of movies that he thinks every film fan should see it's got his personality written all over it of course that was the whole point of the episode i think you guys will very much enjoy it 
uh, as of right now, I was having problems uploading it to the Sight and Sound podcast feed because I'm Podbean is having server issues. But as it stands right now, it's on our YouTube channel, uh, which you can find that in the link in this description here. But you can also check it out. May- maybe by the time this goes up, it'll be up on our podcast feed as well. But if you're if you're curious at all, check out Sight and Sound so you can hear Mark Ellis's movie bucket list. Uh, Jay Williams, give us a sign off here. You want me to talk about where they can find me on the interwebs? Uh, yeah. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. That's great. Uh, at Jay Williams, J to the A to the Y to the E on Twitter and Instagram. It's the same for both. Ryan talked about his movie show. He does have a movie show on Sight and Sound, despite what many people believe. Uh, make sure you're checking out uh, Sight and Sound on Mondays on SK+. Plus. Also, subscribe to the podcast. We are talking about music, movies, and television. Subscribe to us on YouTube. I think you did that already. SightSoundPod.com to get your t-shirts. We are also recapping Game of Thrones. So if you want that official Game of Thrones style recap show with tons of knowledge, you got to go to Collider (laughs) for that because that's not what we're offering. If you want just a bunch of dudes talking a bunch of nonsense, getting names of things wrong and laughing at us, then come on over to Sight and Sound and hear us talk about Game of Thrones. That's where it's at. Uh, What else? Can we talk about Stardust? Make sure you're following us on Stardust. We're going. I I got my first <clears throat> Stardust reaction up. I got on the show. Did you see that? Did you see me on there? I yeah, I saw it. We 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 were both on the show. Yeah, we out here. We out here on <laughs> Stardust. So follow us on Stardust. We're having a great time there as well. Uh, Our uh, username there is Sight Sound Pod, of course. That's right. Um, I don't really know what else to plug, but I do have an update on the thumb. The thumbnail is complete. Oh, good. I can't wait to see it. I'm wondering it, if you uh, totally removed the microphone stand or not. I didn't. Okay. I didn't. I'm, one one looks like it's growing, growing out of someone's arm. So what can you do? You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at WhatUpSnell, and uh, that's all I got. I love you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.